Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Last lecture on conjugate uh, direction methods, our uh, primary concern was how to find the conjugate directions because we had already seen that if I know about the conjugate directions, uh, solving a co convex optimization problem, a quadratic convex problem with positive definite hesion is a matter of n steps. But uh, the question uh, clearly lies that how do I find such a conjugate? direction and this uh, this method which we had written down in the last lecture it was largely uh, this was a method due to hestenes and Teifel hestenes was responsible for a, a brilliant school on optimization and control at uh, an optimal control calculus of variations at chicago and uh, Here we call this particular approach is called the conjugate gradient method. This is called the conjugate gradient method because you my starting conjugate direction is minus g 0. So, you see what are what we generate here at least in the convex case that convex quadratic case that if I slightly tamper the idea of steepest descent method, then I can get an algorithm which is much faster than the steepest descent method at least in the convex quadratic case. So, uh, here because we our initial direction, initial conjugate direction is found by taking the negative of the gradient at the starting point x naught g 0 of course, in this case you might be wondering g 0 is actually nothing but g of x naught. Now, uh, what Hestenes and Stifel shows that if you can construct a new vector which is the gradient at f x k plus 1 which you can also write is as like that. So, once you know d k, you know x k and you find the alpha k which is of this form and then you get the x k plus 1. Now, your d k plus 1 to go from x k plus 1 to x k plus 2 is found from d k in this sort of manner. Now, the remaining question the main major part of the proof uh, lies in the fact that uh, this d 0 d 1 dot 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 uh, sorry d n this uh, series d n minus 1 this series of uh, vectors are actually conjugate direction. That is if we start to prove this thing a proof methodology would first show we have to show essentially that is what we need to show that d 0 d 1 d 2 so on up to d n minus 1 forms a set of conjugate directions. And once I know that these are conjugate directions then it is the same as what we had discussed before. And how do I prove that and what what are what I need to prove. So, what I want to prove is that so what I have to prove that d i h d j obviously conjugate directions with respect to h because the, the original problem has the Hesian matrix as h and of course uh, you have uh, to consider this as positive definite which I have already written. Sorry. So, 
So, H is my Hessian matrix if you want to stress that at every point x. So, you should prove d i h t j or d k h d i is equal to 0 when k is not equal to i or another way of showing is that this is equal to 0 for all i. So, you fix the k and you change the i's for all i which is strictly less than k this is equal to 0 and this is true for So, if you can show this then you basically show that d i in a product h d j is equal to 0 whenever i is not equal to j. So, if k is 1 then you put d 1 h d 0, if k is 2 then you have 0 and 1. k is 2 then i is 0 and the possible values of i are 0 and 1. So, it will be d 2 h d 0 is 0 d 2 h d 1 is 0. So, in this way you basically show that d i h d j is equal to 0 when i is not equal to j. So, what would be our proof approach in this for this when the you have this sort of things when you have to prove something about a large number of elements you you use the method of induction you prove for the say 2, 2 of them and you prove for 3 and then you prove for k then you prove for k plus 1 and that is what we are going to use here the method of induction. So, by the method of induction what are we going to show? We are going to show the following. We are going to say that ok let I will assume that let uh, this is equal to 0. So, we assume for every i which is bigger than or equal to 0 and strictly less than k. So, once I know this what I have to show that this is what I have to show. And that is exactly your induction step. So, this is your induction step. So, once uh, this is known, let me try to use it now. Now, let uh, S V 0, V 1, V k denote the linear span or the subspace whatever linear span is a subspace or the subspace spanned by the vectors v 0, v 1, v k. So, what do I mean by this term uh, spanned by the vectors v 0, v 1, v k. So, you say that any vector say v is element of the span or you sometimes they write l s linear span or just l span of this So, v is this if and only if this is a symbol of can only both ways. V can be written as summation 
uh, alpha i v i i is equal to 0 to k, where alpha i is in R. That is any element in this space can be written as a linear combination of the elements v 0, v 1, v k. So, that is the meaning of linear space. Now, g k is grad of f x k which is h x k plus b. So, g k plus 1 which is grad of f x k plus 1 is h of x k plus 1 plus b. Naturally, g k plus 1 minus g k is h of x k plus 1 minus x k. Now, you know that uh, if I go back to this setup x k plus 1 is written like this. So, x k plus 1 minus x k is alpha k d k. So, it is also g k plus 1 minus g k is alpha times h of d k, because x k since x k plus 1 is x k plus alpha k d k, sorry here I should put alpha k. So, this is uh, what you have actually. So, this is the basic stuff we have. Now, let us see what does this show. So, if I put k equal to 0, then I will have g 1 for k equal to 0. It implies that g 1 is g 0 plus alpha 0 h d 0. g 1 is a linear combination of g 0 and h. Now, since d 0 is minus g 0, I can write g 1 as g 0 plus alpha naught h. Now, you have to put minus here, because d 0 is minus g 0 that is the basic assumption that that is how you take the starting one. This is exactly this assumption and which we will now try to write down here. That is what you have at this point. Once you have this, I can keep on doing the stuff. Now, if I look at d 1, the direction 1, it is minus g 1 plus beta naught d naught, where d naught is again minus g 0. So, so g 1 can be written as g 0 and d 0 can be written as minus g 0. So, b 0 g 0. So, g 1 is g 0 minus alpha naught h g 0. So, it is 1. So, oh, I have minus g 1. So, minus g 0 plus. So, I will have a plus and uh, minus g 1 is minus g 0 plus minus g 0. So, that is what we will have. So, now I can write minus 1 plus beta naught. Okay, beta naught is the, the, the beta naught here beta naught is a beta naught that you already know here. This is a beta naught. This is actually scaling up and generating the descent directions, uh, the conjugate directions. I can write this as this into g naught plus alpha naught h g naught. So, d 1 is a linear combination of g naught and h g naught. So, let us for k equal to 2. So, so what I have what I have concluded here. So, g 1 and d 1 are the linear combinations of this g d 1 and g 1 are linear combination of g 0 and h 0. Now, I leave it to as a homework to prove Now, what we will have here is S
Now, uh, this I of course, uh, what we are trying to show that the linear span or the subspace generated by these two are same as this two and same as this two. So, this is a uh, simple exercise in linear algebra which I pose as homework for your course. So, you have to show this as a homework. So, let us look at k is equal to 2, cut for a minute. So, for k equal to 2, we can again write g 2 as g 0 minus alpha naught plus alpha 1 into 1 plus beta naught one plus beta naught into h g zero plus alpha naught alpha one h square g zero. How to compute this g two is again by putting k equal to two in the expression of g k plus one uh, is equal to g k plus alpha k h d k and then successively suppose g 2 is g 1 plus alpha uh, k h d k h d 1. So, you put what is d 1 and g 1 in their place you will get this expression. So, I will ask you to check it out as homework. Check it out. So, it is your duty to check it out whether what we have written on the board is actually uh, on the screen is actually correct. And now, d 2. So, here g 2 is a linear combination of g 0, h 0 and h square g 0. And so, d 2 is written as The coefficients are getting light, lightly, slightly complicated once we introduce the other variables. So, if I know the gradient vector that and this and this g at gradient vector at g 0 that is x naught then I can know I can have a lot of information about the problem. So, here beta 1 beta naught are calculated accordingly to that beta k formula given in the beginning. Now, what I want to say is that uh, you observe again that g 2 is a linear combination of g 0, h 0 and h square g 0, while d 2 is also a linear combination of g 0, h 0 and h square g 0, which shows that uh, then from there you can have this conclusion that the span generated by g 0, g 1, g 2 is same as the span generated by these vectors. So, again the span generated by see our whole goal now is we are trying to prove that these are conjugate directions you see how much work is involved it is very easy to state the theorem anybody can understand possibly who has done a bit of optimization, but the problem lies that once you start proving that their conjugacy of the directions, then the difficulty starts. Now, this is also equal to the span of
So, that is that is what happens. So, now if you continue in this way for say k steps k minus 1 steps essentially or k steps essentially, then you will have the following by continuing. So, we know the result up to k. So, let us want go up to k by continuing. in this manner that is you see what we did was d 1 was a linear span of 0 g 0 and h j 0. Then we expressed d 2 in terms of d 1 and press back the value of d 1 to get g 2 and d 2 and now in the there are three terms now g 0 h j 0 and h square g 0 expressing g 2 and so is D 2. So, what we found is these two. So, these two you have to again find as homework, it is not very difficult, it is plain simple manipulations. And by continuing in this manner. So, I am continuing in a manner uh, same as what we have just done here and if we do so then I can extend these things. So, our stuff is up to k, well, we do not know what is there in k plus 1 that is exactly what we are set out to prove. this is true and of course, once you know this you can of course, inter extrapolate and say that this is true then sorry not g I may have mistake the directions. is same as this. So, the thing in the top part of the board and the bottom part of the board looks similar, but it is enough that if you prove the top part, once you prove the top part you can uh, understand the bottom part, this is just an extension of that. So, once I know that, I now start uh, doing the stuff. Now, what I can now look at this expression, what I have to compute is for i, for any i which is strictly less than k plus 1, what I have to compute is So, let us see how to compute this expression. So, d k plus 1 is of course, minus g k plus 1 plus beta k d k. So, what I get here is minus 
dk plus 1 h d i plus beta k t k h d i. So, now uh, what I do is to restart uh, this thing and look at ok, I am looking for i uh, strictly less than k plus 1. So, I can choose i equal to k. So, put i equal to k to get Now, what happens to this? That is a very important thing to know. Now, if I put, uh, I, I expect this should be 0, but let us see what happens. If I put BK's uh, expression, this one. So, now BK would become So, what happens is that you see this gets cancelled with this and this. So, this remains and which is nothing but the negative of this. So, ultimately this becomes 0. So, that you know that is what the that is why the choice of beta, beta k is particularly important and that comes out in a very natural way. So, now which I leave for you to think about how, how did people conjure up this expression for b k it has got linked with what we had discussed in the previous section. Okay. Now, here we have this part. So, this part is 0. So, now we have to look at such scenarios where k is strictly less than 1, i is strictly less than k. Now, consider Now, if I do that, if I take uh, now consider i is strictly less than k. Now, using these facts which are already written down on the board, using these two facts, I expect you to prove show that This is a simple exercise in linear algebra, and so I think this this practice is important when you learn on constraint minimum optimization. So, prove this. Show this as homework. Now, once you can, once this is this is true. Actually, H D I can be shown as a combination of G zero, G one, G two, G K, and all those things. So, then you can basically uh, show that uh, because this is equal to this. So, you through this. So, which means this is equal to this, and this is equal to this. So, this is equal to this. So H D I becomes an element of that and so hence we can show that H D I does H D I can be written as okay, H D I yields you have some scalars A i. So, i is equal to 1 to k this is how it happens. 
be a combination of this, where a i with i from these are constants. And uh, now, once I know this, then I can go back to this part, because now I have to look into the case i strictly less than k, because for i equal to k, I know that d k plus 1 h d k is 0. So, this can be again written as, because of uh, h d i is minus a i d i. Okay. Uh, now, what I am going to how do how do I prove that I, I need to prove that this is 0. So, how do I do this? So, I will write down h d i, h d i is So, this goes the calculation. Now, what is d k plus 1? d k plus 1 is nothing but minus d k plus 1 plus beta k d k. And uh, this into a i d i this will give me i is equal to 0 to k, if I break it up inside this is minus g k plus 1 a i of course, uh, is a scalar which I can write in the front. If so, I can take this scalar out and so I can have a i times minus g k plus 1 d i plus b k times a i d k d i. Now, for this to prove this 0, we need to go back to the homework that we gave in the last lecture. So, consider that. So, how to prove this 0, see now you observe that. So, in the same the same problem I have show I have ask you to show that g k d i where d i are our conjugate directions is equal to 0. So, up to k I have conjugate directions. So, g k plus 1 d i i is strictly less than k. So, it is strictly less than k plus 1. So, this is 0 right. So, this becomes equal to 0 because of this assignment just go back and try to see. So, if uh, each d i is a, so if we, I have kept here g k plus 1, then I have d i, where d i's are behaving as a conjugate direction till k, then this holds true. Okay, so, I go back. So, using that particular uh, thing, this becomes 0, while uh, I think there is a small uh, little bit of change I will do in the calculation. Let me rub up this to make it much more effective. Let me not put a i d i here, just I am going to change the calculation. So, let me do something here. So, what I do is I first take the d k plus 1 and write it as minus g k plus 1 plus beta k into d k and that I put with h d i, because then I can have minus g k plus 1 h d i plus beta k d k h d i. Now, this is 0 is already known that is the assumption we have made and here I will have by putting h d i is this I can write this part only as i equal to 0 to k 
a i into g k plus 1 d i. So, we know that from again I go back to this homework where is that. So, whenever k is bigger than this i, so k plus 1 is bigger than i because i is strictly less than k then this is always 0. So, so then using that fact we can now conclude that this is 0 and this is anyway 0 because that is the assumption. So, what I have is that this is 0 and what I have is that this is 0, this is 0 from the homework and this is 0 from assumption. So, ultimately you have d k plus 1 h d i is equal to 0 for i strictly less than k because you know equal to 0 of course, but uh, and with k I have already proved. So, what we finally proved is that d k plus 1 h d i is. So, this would imply finally that d k plus 1 h d i is equal to 0 for i strictly less than k plus 1 and hence we have proved this thing. Okay. So, added with this result, that this result has two parts is this result. In our next lecture, we are going to prove this part and we are also going to complete the homework that I had given. We are also going to complete this homework, where is it? This homework as well as we are going to complete the proof of this part. Once we do that, we will write down the conjugate gradient algorithm. And once we do that, we will stop our discussions of the conjugate gradient algorithm for the moment and then go on to study what is called quasi Newton method. You see the proof here rests largely on the fact of the clever use of identifying two, diff two types of subspaces generated by very different sort of basis. So, basically you are finding a subspace, the same subspace, but with different basis. So, the, these writings here you have the same subspace, but here this is the basis and here this is the basis. So, it, this is generating this and this is generating this. Okay. So, we end our talk today and first in the next lecture we are going to first concentrate on proving the B part of what is left and then which is also very important to know uh, and it is not a very trivial proof. And once we do that, then we can write down the conjugate gradient algorithm, but before that we will also complete the solution of the homework that we had given. So, with that we finish our talk today. Thank you very much. Please go through these calculations very, very carefully because conjugate gradient calculations though they are simple, they are not so straightforward because really you really have to do this linear algebraic manipulations to show that and I expect that you would really take some time to have a look at these things. Thank you.